there books here welcome back to my channel I acquired eight books in June seven of them are books that I bought myself and one is an arc that I got from the publisher is it an arc it's not an arc but it is a paperback finished copy so yeah I got seven of these for myself and the publisher sent me one so I'm gonna show them to you and I'm gonna tell you why I got them you'll know if you've been watching this channel for some time that I'm kind of obsessed with the man booker prize and this year one of my goals is to read all the man booker prize winning books and over the course of the year to slowly collect maybe all of them as well i started the year with quite a collection i think i already had somewhere in the teens of the books there are 53 so far 53 books that have won the booker prize and i now have quite a collection but as I've been reading, there are others that I haven't yet gotten, like I've read them before, gotten them from the library, and so I decided to buy Life of Pi by Jan Martel. This is the 2002 winner. Book was published in 2001, so I mentioned it in my video a few days ago, which is books from the Choose Your Year tag. I've chosen 2001. This is the most popular book that was published in 2001. It went on to win the Booker Prize the next year. I read this one last year from the library. I've also watched the movie. <laughs> I know some people haven't read the book, but they've watched the movie. I think this book is great. And I wanted to own it. And I saw it on Book Depository for just $5.58. And this is a great copy. This is Canon Gate. It is the film artwork. And I don't usually like movie covers of books, but I really like this one. It doesn't really look like the movie cover so I like this life of Pi by Jan Martel it's about a boy whose family are zoo keepers no they're zoo owners in India and they decide to close down the zoo and sell the animals in Canada they're on a boat heading to Canada when there's a shipwreck and the boy is isolated on a boat with a tiger and an assortment of other wild animals and he has to try to find his way to civilization and it's a great coming of age story, but it's also a really great allegory for the life of an immigrant and what it means, what are some of the choices that a person has to make when they decide to give up everything from one life and try for another, maybe better life. If you haven't read it yet, recommend it highly. That's the first book that I got. Well, technically, you know, that's the last book that I got in June, but it was at the top of the pile, so. Last Summer by Carrie Lonsdale is the book that I got from the publishers. This is Lake Union Publishing. They send me these books. I write blog reviews for them sometimes. And I don't remember what this one is about. So let me give you the synopsis from the back. It says, lifestyle journalist Ella Sky remembers every celebrity she interviewed, every politician she charmed between the sheets, and every socialite who eyed her with envy. The chance meeting with her husband, Damien, their rapid free fall into love and their low key intimate wedding are all locked in her memory. But what she can't remember is a tragic car accident that ripped her unborn child from her. Ella can't even recall being pregnant. I'm not gonna read anything else about this. So it's about memory, amnesia, a mother who can't remember having her own child. So I think I need to review this in July, so I'm going to be reading it pretty soon. Last Summer by Carrie Lonsdale. If that one sounds interesting to you, click the link down below so you can go check it out as well. This is Lake Union Publishing. I'll tell you more about this when I do get to it. Last Summer by Carrie Lonsdale. That's my free book. All the others I have bought for myself. The next one is Maya Angelou's second memoir, Gather Together in My Name. I'm doing a read aloud, read along of this on my channel here. so. If you don't watch those videos, don't worry, you're not the only person. Most people who watch my videos don't watch those videos because I'm reading aloud a book, Maya Angelou's second memoir. I read previously her first memoir, and I know there are people who want those videos. They've asked me to make them. So even though I don't get a lot of engagement on those videos, I still make them because I'm reading the book and I'm sharing it with other people. And so I'm reading a copy from the library. I started reading the library copy because I'd ordered this from Book Depository and it hadn't come yet. So I want to stay consistent with the page numbers that I'm reading for those videos, but I do own my own copy. Again, I got this one from Book Depository and it cost me $8.14. I could have gotten a cheaper copy here in the United States, 
but I wanted this specific copy because it matches my copy of the first memoir and as I collect my Angelou's memoir series I want this copy with the silhouette on the front these are my favorite covers from her in this book we're following her as a late teenager she's had a child she's dealing with the fact that she's a single mom and a little bit estranged from her family like as she's trying to exert her own independence she felt like she had to move out of her mother's house but she's also finding that the other family members that she had kind of hoped would embrace her while they haven't shunned her they're also not offering her refuge or help so she's finding out what it means to become an adult to become a responsible adult to become a parent and to shoulder a lot of that burden on your own and she's doing all of this at a time when america is still reeling from the civil rights struggle and the return to normalcy after world war ii and the period before vietnam and it's a lot that's going on and she's trying to just do ordinary coming of age things so it's really interesting if you haven't read the book and you want to hear me read it aloud click the links down below for my playlist where i read chapters of this book out loud or you know get your own copy and read it along with me maybe next up is another booker prize winner that you will see on my july tbr this is last orders by graham swift this won the prize in 1996 and the synopsis says four men once close to jack dodds a london butcher meet to carry out his peculiar last wish to have his ashes scattered into the sea for reasons best known to herself jack's widow amy declines to join them on the surface, the tale of a simple, if increasingly bizarre, day's outing, Last Orders is Graham Swift's most poignant exploration of the complexity and courage of ordinary lives. I'm going to be reading this in July, so you'll hear a little bit more about it. Another Booker Prize winning novel that I added to my collection in June. I got this one from Book Depository as well. A lot of these older Booker Prize novels, they're just not available in the bookstores here in America, or at least not in the bookstores that I frequent. And I can get these paperback copies for a really good price from Book Depository. This one cost me $8.70. And it's a really attractive cover. I like this little to-go cup on the front. Don't know what it means, how it connects to the story, but I like it. So glad I own this one. And that's it for the Booker Prize novels. I only bought two in June. But I did buy other books. This is a Pulitzer Prize winning author, but she didn't win the prize for this book. Ann Tyler participated in this program that Hogarth Publishing had, where they invited popular writers to retell famous Shakespeare works, and Ann Tyler retold The Taming of the Shrew. This is her version called Vinegar Girl, and I read this one a few years ago from the library. I think this is the first of that series that I read. And while I don't really recall having read A Taming of the Shrew, I know the story, I've watched plays of it, and I thought that this did a really good job as an adaptation to that. And I went on to read Margaret Atwood's take on The Tempest, which is Hagseed. I read that, I actually own two copies of it. I read and own Howard Jacobs's retelling of The Merchant of Venice, which is called Shylock Is My Name. And so, I wanted to collect all of those books. There's a paperback series that I wanted to collect, but I never found a copy of that that I could own. And so I'm glad that I found this one really good hardcover. I really prefer collecting hardcovers, except when they're a series or they're out of print or the paperback is just really pretty. This one doesn't have a list of the other retellings, but if you've read some of those Hogarth Shakespeare books, I'd love to talk with you in the comments about which ones you read and whether you like them, or if you didn't, I'd love to talk with you about that too. The next three books that I got were written by Caribbean authors because June was Caribbean Heritage Month and I wanted to read or buy books by Caribbean authors in June. I didn't read any of these books that I bought, but I bought them, so I helped support some Caribbean authors, and at some point, I will read them. The first one is a book by a Jamaican author that I have read before, but I wanted to own my own copy, and I got this one from Book Depository because I love the cover. The title is From Harvey River, a memoir of my mother and her island, and the author is Lorna Goodison. She's pretty well known in Jamaica. Her sister is even more well known because her sister runs or ran a talk show program in Jamaica that my parents used to listen to religiously every day. Well, Lorna Goodison is an author storyteller and this 
collection is again not her memoirs not her autobiography but it does share stories that she probably learned from her mother's childhood and growing up in Jamaica and I read it once from the library and I wanted to own my own copy so I'm glad that I finally found this book depository books are usually really good prices and if you'd like to support my channel you could click my affiliate link in the description box and buy a book from book depository through my link and help support me there this one is printed for the UK market and the original price on the back is £8.99 so I can't remember how much I paid for it but it really wasn't that much really good price and I bought it to support a Caribbean author the next book is a book that I'm gonna be buddy reading with Didi or participating in some kind of a reading experience with Didi from Brown Girl Reading next month. And that is A House for Mr. Biswas by V.S. Naipaul. This is a Trinidadian author. Well, he's of Trinidadian descent even though he spent most of his adult life in England. Sir V.S. Naipaul, he won the Man Booker Prize for Inner Free State, which I reviewed on my channel. He won the Nobel Prize for his contribution to literature over many years. He wrote a lot about Caribbean life and Caribbean people, but also people of African descent and immigrants and immigration from all over the world to other places all over the world. And I mentioned this in my big books video a few days ago, so if you haven't watched that video yet, go check it out. Again, I bought this book from Book Depository. A lot of these books that I'm buying, they come from Book Depository. Somehow I feel like buying books on Book Depository don't count towards my book buying limitations. This one cost me $12.11, but I love this cover and I bought this cover because Dee Dee bought this cover and she shared the cover picture with me. And I said, yeah, that's the one I want to own too. I don't love the spine as much. This is the vintage edition, vintage classic. Is that what it's called? Picador classic. But I like the front. I like the front enough. When I get my bookshelves set up, I'm probably going to display it this way instead of this way. B.S. Naipaul, Mr. Biswas. This one is set in Trinidad. And so we have Trinidad represented in my Caribbean Heritage Month. We have Jamaica represented. And then another of Jamaica's nearest neighbors in the Caribbean is Cuba. And so I bought Heretics by Leonardo Padura. This is originally written in Spanish, translated by Anna Kushner. And I bought this one in the bookstore, an independent bookstore I visited in June and I wanted to support. This is Book Culture. They have a few locations in New York City. I know three of them. This one, I was just in Long Island City in Queens, New York, and I saw the sign for Book Culture and I said, well, I have to go buy a book. And I found this one and it was on a bargain table, but I'd never heard of this author. I haven't read anything from Cuba in a long time. I haven't bought any books that were published by Cuban authors for a while. I think the last book that I read that was that had a Cuban setting was The Mortifications by Derek Palacio. And that was probably a couple of years ago. So I was due another book. Heretics has a really interesting synopsis. It is about Jews fleeing persecution during World War II and seeking refuge in Cuba, losing their valuable artwork in the process and then the family becoming displaced and it's kind of a detective story but it's also something about history and art history and I'm really looking forward to reading it I don't know when it is a big book it's over 500 pages but I'm glad that I bought it because now I can read it whenever I want so those are the eight books that I got in June. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what was your book that you got in June that's your favorite acquisition. Of the books that I got in June, I'm gonna say one of these four is probably the book that I'm most excited to own. I think it's this. Life of Pi was a really good book for me, but also this. And excited to get to this one and probably even more excited to get to this one because I'm looking forward to sharing a reading experience with Didi because we haven't read anything together before. We've discussed books that we both read, but we haven't read anything together at the same time. So I'm looking forward to that. So I don't know which of these is my favorite, but it's okay because they're all mine and I don't have to choose. So give me a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe if you wanna see more, let's talk in the comments. I'd love to hear from you about any of the books that I mentioned here today, or if you just wanna chat about books in general, I'm always up for a bookish conversation. So let's talk in the comments, and until next time, happy reading, bye.